Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to a quick news roundup because we have some big news coming out of Formula 1 this afternoon. Expected news, but big nevertheless, and that is that Sebastian Vettel has signed a three-year extension with Ferrari to keep him at the team up to 2020. As I said, a deal we kind of all expected to be done, and especially when Kimi Raikkonen signed earlier in the week, we kind of felt that was the final piece falling into place. There was some talk from Ted Kravitz actually in FP3 that he'd seen Sebastian Vettel lurking in the shadows with some kind of lawyer trying to hammer out some finer details. I don't know how true that is and how much of that is Ted Kravitz's imagination running away with him, but it is quite a, a funny idea that, that was still being negotiated this morning. I would imagine it was all done and dusted by then. Will there be a get-out clause? That is the talk that everyone's kind of turning to now. It's something, obviously, we're probably never going to get to know unless they actually activate it, but I would imagine, and I'm almost certain, that there will be somewhere along the line a get-out clause. It might be that you can't leave before the end of 2019, but there will be a get-out clause somewhere, and it'll be they're usually something like, if, you're, if the cars are up to scratch, I'm on my way out. Or if Hamilton decides to retire and wants to go talk to Mercedes, there'll be something along those lines. I mean, contracts in Formula One and in, in sport these days, can we really take them as gospel? You know, are they really worth the paper they're written on? I mean, Sebastian Vettel, he still had one year to go on his Red Bull deal in 2014 when he announced he was leaving for Ferrari in 2015. So um, yeah, they're not really worth the paper they're written on in some respects, but I'm pretty sure Ferrari, they know what they're doing. They'll have covered their backsides with that one. It's good for the sport though. I think it's nice, you know, a lot of talk, should we have Hamilton and Vettel in the same car going head to head. I like having multiple teams as well as multiple drivers fighting for championships. So I'd much rather see a four-time world champion and a three-time world champion in separate teams going head to head than in the same team. You know, we all love the rivalries like Prost and Senna. We love that kind of thing in Formula One. Absolutely. But we also want to see lots and lots of teams fighting for the world championship as well as drivers. So I think it's a good deal for Formula One, a great deal for Vettel. I think the money is insane, but you know, they do put their life on the line to entertain us. So it's definitely worth it. But yeah, that was it really on Sebastian. Sebastian Vettel, as I said, Kimi Raikkonen signed earlier in the week as well, so he kind of got what he wanted from his teammates. So yeah, pretty good deal, I would say, for Seb Vettel. Van Dorn, of course, while we're talking about drivers, he announced that he will be, or McLaren announced, he'll be staying for 2018. And from what Zach Brown's been sort of saying, probably beyond that as well, he looks like the long-term option, which is great for him. I do rate Van Dorn. He's had a horrible season, but it's not, it's not his fault. It's one of those where you can't really judge him too much as a driver. He's up against probably one of, if not the best driver on the grid, and he's in a car that's just just not quick and not reliable. So I think given those issues, he's actually doing very, very well. And I do highly rate Van Dorn. I think he's definitely a future world champion. And McLaren, they'll get to the front of the grid. They're through probably the worst of it now. Uh, they're probably able to see a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, I mean, what Alonso does next year is crucial. Lando Norris saying this week, he thinks that he will be an option should Alonso retire. I think he's very, very young, but I, I'd give a gamble. Max Verstappen worked out, didn't it? So I don't know. We'll see how that works out. But Van Dorn is staying for 2018 and probably beyond Alonso. Who knows? I think while we're talking about drive, as well. I may as well stick this one in there. Sergio Perez's future is still not sorted out. I think it seems to me as though a lot of these contracts aren't being sorted because drivers want a one-year deal because obviously all the changes are coming in 2019 with Hamilton's contract up at the end of next season. So everybody wants to kind of wait and see what happens there and nobody wants to be signing for long-term unless they can get a clause in that contract. So Perez probably will stay at Force, in uh, Force India, but um, he's not sorted that one out yet. That's still being negotiated. And Renault, of course, pouring a lot of cold water on the Robert Q. Bitson rumours. They're just questioning whether or not he's ready or not. Lots of question marks is, I think, the quote they use. So it's looking less and less likely that Robert Kubitz will be in that car and probably more and more likely it'll be Carlos Sainz. So who knows? Who knows? I think Christian Horner keeps talking about Sainz and Kvyat staying at Toro Rosso next year. If Renault come knocking, pretty confident Sainz will go. Other than him, realistically, it'll be probably Roland or Latifi, I think, because Alonso, would he go to Renault? Like I keep saying, I've said so many times in videos now that they're not that much further up the grid than uh, McLaren. I mean, Alonso today, 11th place. A lot of help from his teammate with the toe, but actually Palmer 10th. And, you know, they're not that far off Renault and Renault aren't that much further up the grid. So it's a tough one, but we'll see what happens over the coming weeks. As it is Saturday, which I don't usually do, we will talk about qualifying, of course. And the news there is that Lewis Hamilton will start on Sunday on pole position after securing his 68th and record equaling pole position. Oh yes, he has equaled Michael Schumacher's long-standing record, a record I genuinely, genuinely never saw falling. I thought Schumacher was going to be out there for a very long time. Quite a way to go yet before he hits those wins, but 68th pole position, a 142.5 as well, a new lap record, a stunning lap, absolutely perfect. It, it really was. It's one of those that you know he's been 
been itching to deliver ever since they finished in Hungary. So fantastic lap for him. Vettel, second on the grid. So we've got a nice mouth-watering turn one tomorrow. He's just two tenths off pole. Bottas in third, half a second off the pace. Three tenths further back um, from Vettel and Raikkonen and two tenths further off in fourth. Fourth, the Red Bulls came up behind him. Verstappen, he outqualified Ricardo, but that car, my God, is so down on power, which we knew. But again, it's so good on the chassis. It's so frustrating. But I think a really good showing this weekend from Verstappen and Ricardo so far, given that they're down on power. I have to have a word about Jerley and Palmer just touching it a few minutes ago, and that is that he had a great, great qualifying session right up until he had an oil pressure problem that took him out in Q3. He will start 10th, but I tell you what, it looked for all the money that he was going to be uh, outqualified Nico Hulkenberg this week. Weekend, but P10 is still, guys, a massive, massive improvement on where he's been up to this point in the season. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow's race. F1 has been away for far too long. It is back and it looks like we're going to have a cracking race. I can't wait for turn one. Hamilton versus Vettel down there is going to be absolutely brilliant. For Stappen and Ricardo side by side as well. Will there be any further from Hungary? I doubt it. They seem to have sorted that one out, but really, really looking forward to lights out tomorrow. That is it for this quick news round, although I will be back tomorrow with a race review, of course, as I always am. That'll be up a few hours after the Grand Prix. I tend to record it pretty much straight afterwards. Uh, F1 2017 will continue on the channel. Not sure in what form I'm going to put a comment on the video. So if you want to comment on that for me, guys, and give me your thoughts, that'd be absolutely brilliant. But as ever, guys, thank you so much for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.